Welcome back to Dreamin' Does Gaming Dreamin' here playing more The Pale Beyond. Last time, well, we had a few issues with our <laughs> with our camp. In fact, we had our first game over, and now we are we're no longer on the boat, as you can tell. In fact, there is no boat. So we must stay here for the next little while. Um, we're starting here with the week, so you know, it's going to start getting cold. I'm going to go talk to Cordell. Captain, we have had our share during the hunting season, but it appears to be winding down. I wouldn't put my faith in there being abundance of game in the coming weeks. Okay, Hammond. You see Hammond, hard at work at the boiler. Um, hard at work, I see. Have to be. If I sit with my thumb up my arse, we'd all be dead before we know it. Don't need me to sleep at the post. You need something, Captain? Just checking in. You don't need to. If there's any problems, you'll know. I know what I'm doing, Joff, that's what you're wondering. If you don't need anything, getting back to work. Okay. Well, it seems like the crew is adapting quite nicely. They're getting on with their jobs like clockwork. <laughs> Feels like they're back on the open ocean again. They know we're in it for the long haul. I'll see it to that we're keeping up the good work. And you see it that they're entertained when the work is done. Aye. You're sure on words, aren't you? Prefer to talk through your music, eh? Sailor with the heart of a poet. Sure. Uh-huh. Um, we should probably pet all of them. Stroke its head. Pat its head. Be spent first before you can. Oh. Okay, so that's what the fish do. You can give them fish and we can use them again. Alright. So, hoosh. Ooh. Cures freezing. We've got some of those people. Um. Fish causes now malnutrition, really. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're going to need food for the day. Like, that's kind of sad that we only get to 45 there. That puts us up to 63. That puts us up to 55. One person on malnutrition is not the end of the world. Yes, of course it's you again. It's always you. <laughs> okay. Let's see what we have here. Um, let's enter the request tent, see what we're going to do for the day, see what people need. Stanberry? Arf. Should you not be with your master dog? Please do not bother the captain. Apologies, Shaw. No doubt Stanberry smelled the scent of the latest catch on you. This catch. Some fish was added to the store as I take it. Stanbury has quite the taste of it. He's suggesting we feed it to the dogs. If you wish, I'm sure they have enough to eat, though. I'm certain the pack would enjoy that, but we cannot allow them to grow spoiled. Come, Stanbury. Odd creatures. Okay. Cordell. Thank you for building some proper shelters for the dogs. I appreciate the assistance from the crew. Well, dogs are an important factor of this expedition. I'm certain you and your kennel will repay us in kind. No need to worry about that, Mr. Templeton. Again, thank you, Shaw. Shaw, I've got a matter to settle with you. Don't see the problem here. Tucker is going through his personal belongings on the ship, and we found this. A tin of treats, biscuits, confectionaries. Quite a lot. Ah, no, I was hardly hiding them away. They're just my own private selection. A gift from my grandmother before the expedition. Baked them herself. I understand you see them as personal effects, and that was a true... At a point, but as it stands, food is food, and we all need all we can. 
possibly hoard them all to yourself. I'm hardly filling. They're just some biscuits. They're filling enough. Listen, now's not the time um, to keep something like that to yourself. Hmm. Agreed, Tucker. Hand in the tin. It'll join our rations. Will not deprive my crew of their sentimental object. Tucker is free to keep the tin. Hold on to them, Tucker. But don't waste them. We could use them in a pinch. I like that one the most. Of course. But thank you, Captain. Yeah. I don't think there was too much good out of that outcome. Either way, right? Trying to stay warm, are you? Um. How many people do we have freezing? Two people freezing? I don't think we need to do too much here. I think getting it up to 90 is probably going to be fine. Okay. Doctor. I would like to... He's malnourished, he's frostbitten, and demoralized. Demoralized, freezing, freezing. Malnourished. Okay. Let's command those two to rest. Photographer. Um, I'd love to get more of you guys done. Yeah. Here you go. Or actually, no mess. Or actually, who have we done? Tucker. So, the science guy. Hmm. How do we tell who we've done? Is there a way? Yeah, we'll put, I don't know, see I want to do like one of these guys that's not, yeah, you're demoralized. Pretty sure we've done lefty already. I thought we did, you know what, here, there you go. Perfect. Um, now what else is there really to do? Getting out here on the map. Hunting. Well, we're going to need that. Definitely going to need to do this. Elephant seals. Okay. One... Two. Oh, we're only getting like one out of this? Yeah, I'd rather not then. So how about we scout then? Oh, and more fish. Okay. And seals. All right, so now if we come back here, we have two available dogs. Okay. So now we have six. Got it. 
So that means we can send out... Okay, so that's a cool mechanic. Um, scouting. Because then... We can double up on those. And we have three left. Just go and get as much fish as we can. Do we have anyone else that can go? Yeah. Alright. Seems like a lot. And there's doesn't appear to be like much else that we can do then, right? Um two four. That seems like a decent amount. Okay. Furnace is full. Hoosh is basically full. Alright, let's call them for dinner. Crew have their meal. And crew to returns to their post. By the time it's still bright outside. Sure is. I'm flattered, but I really ought to be getting some rest, Shaw. He stares at you before nodding into his sleeping bag. Come, Josephine. In my flying machine. Ah, apologies. The tune has not left my head in weeks. At the very least, I found a manner to calm the pa pack. If it calms the dogs, then may that tune never leave your head. Make a request to Grimley. I'm sure you could learn the song. Ah, uh, I like the top one. Nice. I've forgotten that medley to much else. It is a relief that I can retain something from before the expedition. Anything to carry my mind in the ice. It's actually something we should look at is... Okay. Getting up there in the loyalty. Templeton Jr. is now loyal to me. Grimly still isn't. Hammond isn't. Okay. Grimly and Hammond are who we have to really focus on. What's that? One of the doctor books. Since when could you read? It's got pictures, Dad. You're interested in medicine, are you? A little. Better work than this, anyway. Cool. Maybe you'll become a doctor. Can't tend to the furnace if I'm yapping at ya. It's true. Apparently you're tasting these insigns. You mentioned before, what brand are they anyway? Apperton, same group who tins those peaches. Yeah, they're... At least they're plenty of it. Rather, there wasn't. You'd rather be craving at a time like this? Suppose not. There's just... I don't know. What do they know about tobacco? Fair point. I'm calling night. See you in the morning for breakfast. Reading, Mr. Templeton? Yes, though it's difficult to find light. Those your age still read, or has intellectualism passed us by? Well, I haven't read Chilling Horror, like yourself. Is that a collection, Mr. Templeton? It's a good read, nonetheless. Alright. I mean, I think that looks like we've talked to everyone that we could here. Let's end that. So demoralization is fine. Normal to per um, crew member will be cured of their malnourishment and of their freezing. Yeah, I could go high just to get that decorum up as well. High for today. Nice. Look at that. Yeah, we, we're gonna have some freezing people. Wounded. Alright. Well, those two can go into the med bay.
And then we, in theory, we should actually have um, scientists to do something tomorrow. Nice. Wait, they're no longer demoralized. Why are we losing decorum? That seems odd. No, if I like that mechanic. Okay. Let's see what we have here going on today. Pet all the puppies. Um, the hoosh pot. I mean. We're gonna throw some stuff in here. One, two, three. And we're going to do this as well. Um. We need to put some stuff in here. Yeah. It's okay if we cause one. Something like that. That's eh, only him. That's fine. Alright. The two that are wounded. Um, for sure are going on here. That's what they're doing today. Um. Sure. You can go have an interview today. Why not? Actually, I probably should have waited on that, because sometimes these requests could make someone demoralized. Oh well. Oh, hey, look. Speaking of the devil. <sighs> Days are getting darker, Captain. Crew's been asking about using more oil to fuel the lamps. I told them to piss off, but I figure I should ask you. That plate is not an unreasonable request. That's oil for the boilers, and it's more important than making dinner brighter. It also makes it easier to do their work, Mr. Hammond. I right, well, it's Captain's decision. I'll make do with what they have. Furnace comes first. Yep. Kind of need Hammond here. A little bit less decorum, but that's fine. I mean, tell them Captain's orders if they come sniffing around again. Sure can. Captain Templeton, I won't keep you both long. After dinner, we should have a discussion about the future direction of this crew. Suppose we should consider moving camp closer to the direction of rescue? Indeed. For when that should be, well, we'll talk later. Very well. Oh. Okay. That's it, eh? Um, I mean, we could just go and end the day, but that seems kind of silly. Oops. Um, so let's go here. Now, we could do more of these migration paths. Okay, we're, we don't have enough there. Um, let's hunt these. Wait, you're already freezing. We don't want that. Two, three, four. There we go. Um, we do want to send more scouts out. Ooh. Nice. And more fish. Always good. Alright. And then we come back here. And then we can do that twice more sending them out. Um. 
Um, okay, well, I do want to get fish. So one, two, three, four. Like we just, we just need it. And what can we do here for hunting? Not a lot in that regard. So I'd rather have like these guys go get this, these little penguins, because they're not really worth a lot. Or, yeah, you guys can go do a little bit of research, get some decorum. There we go. And we're out of people, basically. We're not out of people, but you know. We're at a point where the people are uh, needed. Um, I would like to feed it once more, maybe with one more thing of coal. That puts us up to 95. Okay. And let's end it there. Crew have their meal. Still bright out here. He stares at you before nodding to his sleeping bag. I'm gonna call a night. See you for breakfast. That's it. Out of all these. Oh, and Cordell. Dogs need the rest, as do I, as do you. Okay. Curtin Templeton, you wish to speak with us, Kurt? Indeed I did. Have you noticed anything about the ground beneath our feet, Captain? Not about to give way, is it? Not immediately, no. We're looking at the early stages of this ice breaking apart. We don't want to join the dear old temperance. We'll need to be moving within the week. That's so. Start packing tomorrow. We'll be safe to move on at the beginning of next week. And longer than that, we'll be dipping our toes in the water. Well, it's inevitable that we should keep constant moving. Even ignoring the change in ice, our rescue vessel will not be searching for us here. Get the word out then, Kurt. We leave in a week. I will, Captain. To stay as death, we're moving on. Thank you. Good evening, Tim. Pull to in, Captain. Doctor, you seem worse for wear this evening. Sorry, not much sleep lately. Something disturbing your rest? Just some bad dreams. Shame a shame. Get some rest, Arthur. I'll inform you if an emergency arises. Oh, thank you, Kurt. Thank me with a good night's sleep. And... Oh, and then Kurt here. I'm flattered, but I really ought to be getting some rest. Oh, okay. I'll we'll have to move camp within the coming week. Aye. When we get around here, we'll be swallowed up. Camp Shaw has been cautious. Uh, and we are still set to match the arrival of rescue. Aye, let's not waste any more bloody time. Boiler can't last forever. That's not a good sign. Alright. It looks like we've talked to everyone that we can. Let's finish off this week um this should cure everybody nice yeah we have a few people becoming freezing Few people cured of their freezing and wounds. Nice. I mean, that's a pretty clean week. Um, normally we've only been doing two weeks, but these ones have been flying by pretty quick. So we'll keep on going. Okay, sorry about that. Just had to get pulled away there. Um, but we're still going to... Oh, okay. So we've only got... Oh, I guess we're leaving the camp. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're, we're still going to keep going. Like I said, normally do only two weeks, but that's gone by pretty quick. So uh, maybe we'll sneak a third week in here. Let's move to the next camp. 
After a hard morning dragging the boats, the crew come across deeper snow ahead. Captain, the snow is on the ice getting deeper. We'll need to find a better path before dragging the whole crew through it. We'd be happy to take up the reins. Best we leave that to one of your scouts, Mr. Darl. The ice behind us is encroaching. We didn't lag behind a man with a cane. You know, that old limp isn't bad, Templeton. It's bad enough. Time of, is of the essence. Very well, you can't go with my team anyway. Any one of them are capable of finding the path in the ice. Captain, if you want to judge the course yourself, you should go ahead with them. Ill-advised. We don't know what lies ahead. Best not to take any unnecessary risks. Um, no, I should probably go with them. I mean, kind of makes sense, right? No, Kurt is right. I should head with them. I mean, it sucks to lose the Templeton loyalty, and Kurt's, like, loyalty is already maxed, but... That just seems like the right thing to do. Alright, choose a scout to send forward. Um, we got a thing. Uh, soft spot for Flick. <laughs> so, let's go with Flick. Flick, you're with me. Let's go. You and Flick trudge your way uh, further ahead, keeping an eye out for dips in the snow that could damage the boats. It isn't long before you hear a sound from ahead, and the ice is thinner. Um, well, normally when you hear a sound in the ice... When it's thinner, you don't want to walk on it, so <laughs> that's indicative of uh, thin ice. So you step on that, you go through. So let's just stop here. The eggshell surface of the flows erupt, revealing a large, slimy creature mouth agape with files of razor sharp teeth expectant. Leopard seal! Oh, okay. Well, not thin ice like I was expecting. Um, this is much worse. Okay, uh, let's use the hunting shotgun. Steady it as you aim towards the beast, barreling towards Flick. He continues unhindered. Fear mixes with snow, uh, freezing Flick in place. Fire. Crack the hunting as it pierces the flesh of the sea leopard, but the beast continues to charge. Oh, oh no. He's gaining speed, closing the distance. I guess we reload a shell. There's about 10 yards. We reload again uh, before clasping the barrel tight. Charge charges into Flick, knocking them over in the snow. Fire! The shock connects. And the dr beast drops lifeless on the ice. Okay. Uh, inches away from Flick, shaken but alive. Uh, well, I mean, we harvest it for food, obviously. Takes two do dog sledding teams to drag the creature onto stable ice. How are you doing, Flick? Processing and packing the sea leopard meat, trova undigestive food. Um, take the fish's rations. Uh, feed the fish to the dogs. Right left to the dogs. They can handle the meat better than us. Dogs seem pleased with their treat. Oh, we're done. Act. One. Oh, that was that was the entirety of the week. Okay. Uh, personal log. New camp has been erected on the ice floe. The prospect of land is still far off from here. The leopard seal attack. Um, the crew were ambushed by a leopard seal whilst moving camp. Yep. Um. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> It was fortunate that all managed to escape with their lives. We survived because we were prepared. It's quick thinking the appropriate resources that won out the day for the crew. That vigilance is to be kept up at all times, lest the crew meet with a true disaster. That leopard seal is but a warning of the dangers that rest on the ice. Temperance went under, finally consumed by the ice. She will be missed. The old vessel had become a home for the crew, even when trapped on the ice. It served as constant presence. Monument of the world, we traveled a world that was left behind to see it go weighed heavily beyond the crew, upon the crew. Captain Hunt. Tracks were found in the snow. A frozen coat. <laughs> it's going a little slow. Proof that, if nothing else, Hunt and his group were able to survive beyond the boiler incident aboard the Temperance. 
It is too late to raise concerns now, the crew may whisper, but Rufus Hunt is a dead man. I have to commend Hunt, he is much hardier than first believed, or should we catch up to him, I may just kill him myself. Tempted to go down to the bottom one, but also this top one. <laughs> Let's commend. May be a man of many surprises to have made it as far as he had. It almost fills the crew with hope in regards to their own chances. If Hunt and his band of deserters are able to carry on against the elements, then that should be the truth for the rest of the crew in turn. By all estimates, appear that summer has arrived on the ice, a prime occasion for hunting and a comparable respite from the truly freezing temperatures. The worst of which are yet to come. With the arrival of summer comes the promise of winter. We must not lose sight. So, the long winter will prove the greatest challenge to, uh, to the crew. The crew must be ready, lest they be torn apart by unlivable temperatures, a lack of food, and the harsh cutting blizzards yet to come. Okay, well now that seems like a good time to sign off here. So, thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time.